guys, it's Tisha. We're here at Skills for Life, and I met these two wonderful women who were born without arms. I'm here with Jessica, and uh, we just wanted to give you guys a little extra view into other people's lives who also don't have arms. And I was thrilled, too, to meet them because I have always wanted to meet um, Anne here to my right, and... I actually heard briefly about Anya. I think I saw you on some photos before. So um, welcome to Life with Feet, and thank, thank you. you both for um, coming on and, and, and sharing some of your life stories with us and entertaining our questions. Because I know, Tisha, you were kind of curious about their whole experience with being mothers since they're both... Uh, do you want to tell a little bit? Uh, tell us a little bit about that and, and how, first of all, how many kids do you have and, and how, how is it different for you? If Anya wants to go first, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so I have one son. He's nine right now. And, you know, it's funny because the older he gets, I'm like, yes, he's not a baby anymore. I am never doing this again. <laughs> it's just, it was hard, like, beginnings. And, and because I raised him on my own, it's, it's, um, it was hard. Like, I just wanted him to walk, and I just wanted to be able to be more independent with him and not have to rely on anyone else. So, like, every little step that he would make, um, you know, whether it's starting to walk or, like, really listen to what I'm saying, uh, our first outings together, those I cherished. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, that was just amazing. I, yes, I can really relate to that. Because I would call my mom when I had, like, a first big accomplishment with my daughter. I'd be like, I just put her into a baby sling by myself. Or I'd, like, I put her into this. I remember this one time. It took me a long time to get her into a baby Bjorn baby sling. And I worked up a sweat doing it. And my mom and dad at the time lived a few blocks away from us. And I walked up to the door and rang the doorbell. I'm like, hello, mom. <laughs> so... Oh, or like the first time I was able to get her into a um, stroller and push her down the road. And again, same thing, surprise my mom, here I am. And um, so I have two children. Um, they are 14 and 11 now, a girl and a boy. And definitely I can um, relate to Anya. It was really tough that first year because they need you so much. And it was kind of figuring out what works. So I had a, a carrier that I carried them in. And then when they got too big for that then I put them in a like a rocking kind of chair vibrator chair and I pushed that to their rooms and then when they got too big for that and as soon as they could start crawling then I just made them follow me everywhere oh. around and it was really neat to see um, how they adapted so when I would pick up my kids they had learned to hold on so they'd hold on to my hair or my shirt and then other people like my husband would pick up the kids and they would just be dead weights so they like they could tell the difference and i think i mean anya probably had the same experience where she didn't have arms to stop her toddler from running off so you had to use your voice a lot more and i had a friend one time recognize that she's like you said your son's voice his name and his head just popped right up <laughs> <laughs> and looked so i think you know he just they both didn't know know any better and They've just always known me as the way I am, I guess. So. That's just fabulous because I think there are always those anxieties for any mom to be or someone who wants to be a mom. I mean, I don't know about you, Tisha, but I always wondered, well, how am I going to carry the baby? What about you? Um, I'm n So I'm not at the point where I'm ready for kids yet, but it's always been on my mind where I'm questioning, like, how would I carry a baby? Like, would I be able to? What's the whole process of, you know, uh, pregnancy would be like? Um, I'm not really afraid of carrying the baby, but I'm afraid of what other people would, like, where they're looking and they're like, oh, you're doing it wrong or you're not doing it properly. Or um, so when I try something new, I always do it by myself and, like, in a room, like, trying to figure out things on my own. Uh, it's just, other people's perspective of you yes. shouldn't you shouldn't be a mom because you don't have arms yeah. you can't carry your kid and see I, I had to overcome that and realize that a lot of that is just in my own head and most people have admiration 
for you and, and respect. And yeah, same thing. I had to practice a lot of things kind of in private, figure out like um, <laughs> my daughter, I wasn't able to nurse. Um, so we fed her by a bottle and that's what worked at that time. And then my son, I ended up nursing him because he was willing and I just went in with a different perspective. And there was times where I had to like, that were a huge struggle when he was just little trying to get him to latch on by himself. And we had to you know, try different positions and just like time and I had to kind of learn what was best for me and there's always, whether you're an able-bodied person or a person missing limbs, there's going to be people, people that have opinions about what you should do with your baby and how you should do it <laughs> and in the end you have to do what is best for you. For example, like my son for a time wanted to eat like every two hours and I'd have people tell me I should be feeding him less, but if I waited to feed him, then he was that much harder to get him to nurse because he would all be worked up and angry and really fussy. So I just had to do what was like, I knew if I just fed him every two hours for that time that both of us were like happier. So. Oh wait, can we back up a little? Sure. When you are nursing, I'm wondering, <laughs> are you actually holding the baby or are you like laying down so the baby can, you know, nurse? So when he was little, little, um, I started out nursing him, um, laying down, so I'd lay on my side and then, okay. um, have him come up to me and, um, that was like, initially it was hard because he was just, he was so little and then when he got a bit bigger, I was able to just kind of bring him onto my lap and, you know, eventually like, I was able to like, I'd use my mouth and I'd kind of grab onto his clothes sometimes and then he would grab onto my hair and I just pick him up and swing him onto my, mm. onto my lap, and then he'd nurse. And yeah, and it was like, it was a. I mean, I was grateful I had both experiences because it was, it was, you know, I had bonding experiences with my daughter in different ways, and bonding experiences with my son, in that way as well. So, and Anya, did you actually nurse as well when you had your son? For like a month, I did. <clears throat> it was. Um, it's not the easiest thing ever. <laughs> I would, when he was real, well, I've only uh, nursed him when he was little. But I would actually put him on a pillow, and then I would kind of slide my, my leg underneath the pillow, and I'd hold him just like that. And then I'd have to, like, bring my knee up really high, and trust me, being in that position for a long time is not very comfortable. So I did the whole... Uh, me laying down on my side and him next to me too, mm -hmm. which was a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just didn't have enough to keep going for longer than It's this. tough. As a new mom, like I know with my daughter, it was like it was emotional because you're a new parent and so no one really prepares you of how that's going to feel. And then she was screaming and pushing me away and then I just had too many people touching me too. And so in the end, I, I pumped for six weeks and then transitioned her to a bottle and you know in the end you have to, any parent has to get over any kind of guilt because there's lots of loud voices out there telling you yeah. exactly what you should do and what is best and when it comes down to it you have to do what is best for you and the baby mm -hmm. and what's going to make you your best version of a mother I guess so. So I have two questions um, you said that your pregnancy was not planned but yours was. Yes. Um, how did you deal with, or did you have any issues with pregnancy, um, talking to your doctor, you know, the whole like delivery room and those kinds of mm -hmm. issues that might come up, um, as you're preparing to have a child? Yeah, so, so I, I did. Uh, first of all, apparently nobody thought that I should be having a baby <laughs> to begin with. And I don't know if it was because I was young or because they didn't think that I was gonna be able to do it on my own. Mm. But I've had doctors ask me over and over and over if I'm sure that I wanna have them. I said, you know, you still have time if you change your mind. So I ended up switching that doctor. Then I went to a new one and he actually was like, you're high risk, um, I can't do it. So then he transferred me to a different hospital and they kept insisting on me having a C-section. Mm. And I said, but there's no 
there's no reason for that. I, I don't want to do that. See, I didn't want to do that because I said, well, then my legs are going to be numb for mm -hmm. who knows how long. Then I won't be able to do anything. Like, I need to feel my legs. I want to be able to hold my son after he's born. So I absolutely refused. Um... Yeah, that was quite an experience. <laughs> and they, they let you refuse? It, yeah, yeah, okay. they did. I guess they were kind of worried about me being so small framed and my hips and, and everything. Um, and yeah, we did run into some issues. I couldn't have the epidural or anything like that because of my um, back surgeries. Um, so I had to get an IV in my neck and um, some painkillers that way, uh, which didn't help much but we did it yeah yeah of course uh, we ran into some issues of my son not breathing when he was first born um so like I remember his up scar score was like two at first he was all blue my mom was there with me and I didn't see him and I remember just laying there and being like why isn't he crying why isn't he crying they just wouldn't tell me anything so that was stressful, but then he was fine, and he and he's fine, and he's big, you know, almost as tall as I am right now, mm -hmm. which makes him very happy, <laughs> and makes me happy too because he can hope that much more, you know, being a strong little guy. Um, so I, you know, it was all worth it. Well, I, thank you guys. I think you've given me a lot of encouragement to go have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can endorse the sentence. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> well, aside from that, there you have it. There is no reason that anyone watching, if you're ever questioning whether you can be a mom without arms, these women have proven that anyone can be a mom with love and just will figure it out. So I guess we don't have a question anymore, right? Yeah, just... Just do it. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was totally unexpected. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, or if you want to see more videos like this one, please go to patreon.com slash toe talks and subscribe. Bye. 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 <laughs> Everyone's right-footed. <laughs>